In this video, we're gonna dive deep into how to set up the almighty four cable method so you can get the most out of your guitar and your effect pedals and or multi-effects unit. So why on earth would you wanna do this? Well, it gives you the flexibility to move your effects to be either in front of your amp's drive channel, the EQ stage of your amp, or after your amp channel in the effects loop. So if I go over to my screen, I have a preset loaded up right now with some delay on my guitar. <laughs> Right, And if I wanted to, I could move this delay from being in the effects loop like it is right now to have it before the amp. Right, You can hear that drive on the delay now. So you can play around with repositioning these effects and you can also use amp sims with the power section of your amp and all sorts of things so you can explore any guitar tone in the universe. Hey yo, it's Alex from Meta My Music, and as always with this channel, it's my mission to help you, the artists, produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their music in a deeper way. And in this video, we're going to dive deeper into a little bit of my own guitar setup with my band Dizzy Mystics and what I do at home for recording in using the four cable method to make the most out of your effect pedals and your amp. So again, why would we want to do this? So the whole reason behind doing this in this crazy setup is to give you the ability to run effects before the gain stage of your amp, as well as after the gain stage of your amp in the effects loop. And the reason for this is that certain effects sound very different depending if they are before or after the amp's drive stage. And then especially with something like the Helix or any other multi-effects unit, you have the flexibility to add and remove effects in your chain to be either ahead or in the effects loop of your amp in real time without having to change out cables and effect pedals. And in general, you'll see that modulation effects, drives will typically be before the amps gain section and more time-based effects like reverb and delay will find themselves in the effects loop. However, that's not a steadfast rule. You can totally experiment with placing any effect anywhere in your chain and see what tones and what effects you can get. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to set this up both with a multi-effects unit as well as your traditional guitar pedals. Before we get started, here's what you're gonna to need to set up the four cable method. You're gonna need four high quality cables. You're gonna need an amp with an effects loop at the back. You're gonna need effect pedals or a multi-effects unit. And of course, you're gonna need a guitar. So first I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up with your more traditional guitar effect pedals. Then I'm gonna move on to how to set this up with a multi-effects unit such as the Line 6 Helix because it's slightly different. And then I'll show you some fun things you can do after that. So to set up the four cable method with pedals, the first cable is going to connect the guitar to the input of your effects that you want before the amp. All right, so in my case, the first cable is going to connect the output of my guitar into the input of my overdrive pedal because I want this guitar effect, the overdrive, to be before the amp. The second cable is going to connect the output of my overdrive into the input of my amp, which is the Rev 740. The third cable is going to come out of the send of the effects loop of my amp and connect to the input of my delay pedal, which I want to be after the gain stage section of my amp and have it in the effects loop. And then the final cable is going to, and then the fourth cable is going to connect the output of my delay pedal into the return of the effects loop of my amp. Okay, so cable one out of the guitar into the overdrive. Cable two from the overdrive into the amp. Cable three out of the send of my amp's effects loop into my delay pedal. Cable four out of the delay pedal into the return of the effects loop of my amp. Then of course I have the output of my amp connected directly to my two notes live, which is going into my audio interface. And that's what we're hearing. Now let's move on to setting up the four cable method with a multi effects processing unit, such as the line six helix, or there's many other multi effects units out there that will work with this method. The only thing you have to make sure your multi effects unit has 
is an effects loop as well. All right, so I'll walk you through how I have it set up and the special caveat that you have to have with a multi effects unit. So to start, the first cable is very much the same way. It's coming out of the guitar and going into my multi effects unit. So it's going into the Line 6 Helix. In my case, I'm going through a volume pedal before I'm going into the Line 6 Helix. So just keep that in mind. But essentially, I'm going out of my guitar into the Line 6 Helix. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but what we need to do next with the second cable is to come out of the send of the effects loop of our multi effects unit. So in my case with the Line 6 Helix, I'm coming out the send of the FERC's effects loop because we have four effects loops on this thing, which is crazy. But I'm coming out the send of the effects loop and going into the front of the amp. So I'm just gonna walk through how all the inputs are set up for this method before explaining why. So the third cable is coming out the send of your amp's effects loop and coming back into the return of the effects loop in your multi effects unit, or in my case, the Line 6 Helix, which will be the return of the first effects loop. And then the fourth cable comes out of the output of your multi effects unit. So I'm plugged into the output of the Line 6 Helix, going into the return of the effects loop of my amp. So to recap it real quick, cable one is coming out of your guitar and going into your multi effects unit. Cable two is coming out of the send of the effects loop of your multi effects unit and going into the input of your amp. The third cable is now coming out of the send of the effects loop of your amp and going back to the return of that same effects loop in your multi effects unit. And then the fourth cable is coming out of the output of your multi effects unit back into the return of the effects loop of your amp. All right, now that we have all the cables hooked up, let's hop over to HX Edit so we can look at the Line 6 Helix and set up what we need to with the effects loop. All right, so I've loaded up a brand new preset here, and this is emulating what is on my pedal board. Okay, so we're starting with a clean slate, and the first thing that we're gonna reach for is a send and return. So if I click send and return here, we have all sorts of different options to control the inputs and outputs of the Line 6 Helix. And this thing has four effects loops, which is mind boggling. So you have four different ins and outs that you can assign to whatever you want. But for now, we're gonna grab effects loop one because that's what we plugged in our output and input to is the send and return of effects loop one. So I'm going to double click on this and bring it to the end here. Okay, so the first thing to make sure is that, yes, you have your send and return levels and the mix is 100%. And now we, have, we should have signal coming through the guitar. Great, so now we have signal coming through. So with the effects loop on, now we get a signal and I'm coming through my amp. And basically I'm just like playing through the clean channel of my amp. If I turn a different setting on my amp, like overdrive, then we get an overdrive sound. So I'm just gonna go back to clean for now. And the beautiful thing about this setup, okay? This is the big unlock. So the beautiful thing about setting up the four cable method in this way with something like the Line 6 Helix and an amp with an effects loop is that if the effects loop is enabled, so those inputs and outputs are on, you're essentially running from your guitar into your effects unit, out of your effects unit, into the amp, out of the amp, back into your effects unit, and then out of the effects unit, back into the return of the effects loop of your amp. And the beauty of this, of course, is we can put effects ahead of the amp or effects after the amp, which I'll show you in just a sec. But the beautiful thing about this is if you disable the effects loop or you don't have an effects loop block in your patch setting, um, you can actually bypass the gain staging, the EQ section of your amp and just use the power stage. So essentially, if you're using a preset that is using an amp sim, you can bypass the amp part of your amp and just use the power section with an amp sim. All right, so let me show you that behind the screen real quick. Okay, so right now we just got a clean tone running through the amp with our effects loop on. So if I go ahead and add, let's say an overdrive pedal, distortion pedal in front of the effects loop, it's essentially adding a drive pedal in front of our amp. Let's grab this guy. So I have a little bit of dirt on there. If I disable it, back to clean. 
If I wanted for some reason to throw this distortion pedal in the effects loop of my amp, I could simply put it after the effects loop block. Okay, so let's say we wanted this back and front and let's go ahead and add a delay. So I'm gonna hit delay. I'm just gonna choose simple delay for now. And now we have a delay in front of our amp after that overdrive. <laughs> So notice, there's a lot of dirt in that delay, right? But let's go ahead and move this delay into the effects loop of the amp and see how it sounds, right? Maybe we take down the feedback. We can swap this out. Maybe we want a different delay. Right, it has a different sound. You can hear the delay much more if I move it back in front of the effects loop. Notice how much more dirty the delay is. And the cool thing about this setup as well is you can swap around pedals without having to unplug cables and rearranging your whole pedal board. You can just do it with the HX Edit interface. Another great thing though is you can actually play around with the factory presets and listen to them through the power stage of your amp, which is super cool. So let's give that a shot. All right, so we're back in the screen. So I'm just going to go to factory one and select the first preset here. All right, so the cool thing about this is you can actually still play presets, factory presets or whatever, by using the amp sims in the Light 6 Helix, but with the power section of your amp, okay? So I'm still getting that like tube overdrive, but I'm just bypassing the gain staging of the amp of the Rev 740 itself. So I can get the flavor of these different amp sims, but with a real tube sound. And hey, if you've been writing or making music for a while and want to enhance your understanding of the whole music production process to help you go from your very first ideas all the way to producing a finished mix and master of your own music in your home studio, I've created a masterclass that goes over the three secrets of developing your creative process across all the major stages of music production and I've jam packed it full of actionable insights that I've learned over my 10 plus year journey of being a guitarist and musician, uh, an engineer, producer, all that great stuff. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can find it in the link below. And there you have it, that wraps it up. That's how to set up the four cable method with something like the Line 6 Helix, as well as your more standard, typical guitar pedals, of course, with an amp that you have that has an effects loop. So let me know if this was useful in the comments down below. Let me know if there's any guitar focused content that you'd like to see in the future on this channel. I'm actually planning on expanding my pedal board and walking through how I'm setting it up for live settings, as well as how to make an epic guitar pedal board to control Ableton to make the music of the future happen. If you got value out of this video, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna stay in tune for the next Metamind Music Transmission, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until the next video, I will see you next time.